Bruce, you must have something really good too. Of course I do. It's Bruce Danielson, and I guess I'm here to entertain you too. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the June Park Board meeting. Rita, would you please do a roll? Where's Rita? Here she is. There she is. Okay. Rita, would you please do a roll call so to determine that we have a quorum? Jim Stavanger? Here. Ann Nactigal? Here. Todd Sunley? Here. Mike Begaman? Here. Mick Conlon? Rick Weber? Here. Brooke Wagner? Here. Do you have a quorum? All right, thank you. In your packets uh, are the minutes from the May 19th meeting. So I'd entertain a motion to approve in a second, please. Move to approve, Dr. Second, Begaman. Roll call, please. Stavanger? Yes. Nakiko? Yes. Sully? Yes. Begaman? Yes. Weber? Yes. Wagner? Yes. All right, thank you. Item number three, public comment. So it's an opportunity today for people who are here uh, for agenda items to offer their comments and support or, or otherwise for any agenda item. I would just ask uh, that if you're not staff, if you would identify yourself so that we could tell who's here. Ladies. Oh, my name is Myra Palomper. Thank you. We can't be English. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, hearing no public comment, or, oh, Luke. Oh, Luke Justin and Floyd Companies. All right, thank you. No comments from the public, any unfinished business, item number four. Hearing none, we'll go to number five, new business. First up, the Tuthill House Gifting Agreement, that's Kelby. I think it's on. <laughs> Yes, thank you. The uh, Tut Hill gifting, conditional gifting agreement for the Tut improvements to the Tut Hill House. Uh, this process, as you well know, began late last fall uh, when uh, people from the neighborhood, especially Kathy English and Margaret Blomberg, uh, embarked on an effort to raise some, uh, some money to make the improvements to the house so that it stays uh, the event venue that it has been uh, for quite some time. So this gifting agreement, they will gift us the improvements to the house. Uh, so they are paying a contractor to do the improvements. Uh, they're not giving us the money that we bid it out. The contractor has been selected and paid um, by the Tut Hill uh, Neighborhood Association. So we've done uh, gifting agreements like this in the past, but some of the other ones that you've seen, uh, typically they give us the money and then we bid out the work. Uh, so this one's just a little different. Uh, than that, but it is something that we've done before. Uh, I have also um, provided you with some concepts of what some of the improvements uh, could be. The final design is not yet complete. There's still some things to be worked out, uh, mainly because there, there are still some items within the interior of the house that could impact some of the exterior piece. Uh, but just in general, uh, looking at the deck going away, and being replaced with a concrete patio, adding uh, an accessible ramp to the south side of the house, uh, updating some of the landscaping, and then adding some additional views to the gardens from the north side of the house, which originally was the uh, front entrance. So what you will see in the northeast view, um, if you see the steps that go up to what looks like a doorway, that would have been the covered porch uh, from when the house was originally constructed. Still having conversations as to whether or not uh, that door is going to go in in that location or if it's going to be a bank of windows. And that to give just some more um, viewing of the gardens from within inside the house. Also talking about keeping the two um, French doors that are on the east side of the house. In this view they're shown as windows. Uh, but again, that's one of those things that's still, that's still being worked out. 
Uh, but outside of that, the uh, the other views are pretty much um, similar to what you see on the landscape plan. And again, these are conceptual because there are still some other things that we need to to work through as far as the design goes. But one of the reasons why we're here in front of you in June is to make sure that we get the gifting agreement approved so that we can, because we still have some work on, on the city's part for asbestos abatement and stuff, and we need to coordinate that with the contractor schedule so that we can get construction beginning either late August or the first part of September. And also because of the size of the gift, it will require uh, city council approval as well. Uh, the terms of, of the agreement are similar to other terms that we've done. Of course, we're requiring a licensed and bonded contractor, uh, requiring insurance, requiring a warranty uh, that a project manager is provided. That can be uh, the general contractor can serve as that, uh, that project manager. Uh, and that all of the, uh, the building plans um, need to be approved by Parks and Recreation and Building Services before anything begins. There's also a section here that talks about uh, if other things are found that need to be rep uh, repaired when we get into the renovation. Typically in renovations, you find some things that you didn't typically expect. Um, and this agreement puts that additional work on the uh, Neighborhood Association. Now, depending on, obviously depending on the size and scope of what is found, we can obviously have those discussions with the Neighborhood Association at that time. But some of the things that we anticipate are some rafters that may need some repair or things like that that the contractor is already well aware of. Uh, there is one sentence in this agreement in Section 2, uh, number 11, the very last sentence of that uh, paragraph we would like to strike out of the uh, out of the agreement uh, as it doesn't really pertain as we're not um, uh, city reserves the right to refuse payment for unauthorized work we're not receiving any payment anyway because since they're gifting the agreement uh, the improvements so we would just uh, I'd like to strike that last sentence uh, it's been a very good process and a lot of input to get us to this point uh, especially in the gifting, not only with the gifting agreement, but uh, where the resource and group and the neighborhood association is on their fundraising efforts uh, to get us to this point to anticipate construction uh, late August, early September. Uh, of course, Kathy and Margaret are here uh, with us today, um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have or uh, questions that you may have of the neighborhood association. Uh, the, the substantial completion date that's put in this gifting agreement is June 1st so of 2022. Uh, so the improvements would need to be done by June 1st of next year. And that'll give us time then that we can have a summer rental season. Are we running into any uh, supplies or anything, inventory or material backstoppage that's happening in the rest of the construction world? Not from anything that I've heard. He's not indicating. He told us that he's... Come to the microphone. Our primary focus is the outside of the house. We're waiting on an answer. Okay. Our primary focus right now is the exterior, the siding, the roof, the windows, the uh, patio. And we've been told that those materials are available. Uh, we're working with the contractor and one of the providers. So, good. and the prices that we were quoted are good for. Anyhow, we're locked into the we're, we're locked into the price. I think you lucked out on that. I think we did. We're working with a good contractor. He's taking good care of us. Yeah, thank you. Todd, you had a question for Kelby. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, section two in number ten, that last that second sentence it says parts and records contacted when work is completed for final review and acceptance. Who from the park and rec department would that be? Do we have a do we have a professional that does a final inspection or is it just I'm just curious. It would be, you know, members of our team. So um, obviously I will be involved either Tori Miedema or Mike Patton would be involved. 
Of course, uh, there's going to be code considerations and building services will be through uh, to do those inspections as well. Uh, we also have a park carpenter and one of our district supervisors is well versed in, in the construction and remodeling world and you know, we'll bring him along as well. Uh, and, and we'll all be in this. I mean, we're not just going to turn them loose at the end of August and not, and just wait for a phone call and say, hey, we're done. There's going to be update meetings along the way, um, of course. Uh, we've got a uh, park caretaker and service worker that are, that are in the park. So we're going to be conscious of all of the construction activity and their progress as, as it goes forward. Yep, it's just Basically a kind. The same same yep. Yes. Yeah, the exact same footprint. Do you, really, the only things that change is some additional um, walkways, a ramp, and the patio versus a deck. Um, there is a, a, a formal garden or a formal patio that's listed on here, but that's conceptual, not likely to be part of of the first um, of the construction that we're going to see through this gifting agreement. But. Yep. Yeah, you know, we're still uh, we're still in conversations about exactly how that's going to work. But yes, the renovation of the interior would include the upstairs, uh, and is going to require some. You know, uh, right now there's no stairway to get up there, so that's that's one of the things that still needs to be discussed and figured out. Um, but yes, the upstairs would then be open uh, for people who reserve the house. So we have space. Right. Yep. So there will be some additional space, more than the 900 square feet that are there now. Other That's questions for Kelby? Thank you, Kelby. Thank you. Due to the size of the gifting agreement, this is something a uh, motion for approval would be actually on a motion for a recommendation to the city council for their, their approval. So I would entertain a motion as such. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. Yes. All right. Well, good afternoon, Dustin Powers for Planning and Development Services. Uh, uh, on your agenda today, uh, several items that we'll be looking at. Uh, this is related uh, to the, Sioux, the former Sioux Steel site downtown and the redevelopment of that. Okay, Dustin, we're going to need to get you on the mic. District. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, again, uh, there's a number of considerations that we'll be looking at uh, uh, related to this project here on your agenda today. Uh, those are items really 5B through 5E, um, looking at a number of considerations related to park purpose, uh, roadways through uh, the park, as well as granting of and recommending granting of easements uh, to the city council. So uh, I'll go through these uh, in kind of the order of the agenda for your consideration, but we'll go through all of those uh, uh, so you can hear the entire presentation here. Uh, first, I want to briefly just talk about the project so you can um, really understand the entirety of the project as it relates to the Steel District. Uh, the project is about seven and a half acres, uh, again, located at the former Sioux Steel site downtown. Uh, located between Falls Park West, Levitt at the Falls, and the Big Sioux River. Uh, here on the screen, you can see the site layout. Uh, you can see access would be through Falls Park West um, from Phillips Avenue, where 4th Street would come through. There would also be access on the south side uh, from 6th Street. 
uh, that currently has an access easement through there today, just not uh, able to accommodate the type of traffic that we'll see with the density provided by the development. And uh, that'll be another consideration that we'll have. Uh, just last night and, and moving forward here in the next month, we're at City Council currently talks of, talking about tax increment financing. Uh, that would go to support the parking structure that's uh, on the center of the screen there. Um, what that would do is once, once the development occurs, uh, that financing can be used to help build that infrastructure um, to basically reimburse the development developer for that infrastructure. Uh, what's uh, uh, a part of that a development agreement with, uh, with Lloyd, uh, CR Lloyd Associates is that that parking structure will need to be available to the public. So um, anyone attending a Levitt event or, or uh, attending something uh, in the district or Falls Park West or, or for the future Jacobson Plaza could use that parking structure. Um, it, it, it would be used similar to how we use our public parking structures. So during the day, they will have lease parking customers in there that they'll be using the facility, uh, but likely they'll have some overflow that people could be able to use for hourly parking uh, during the day. Um, and then consistent with our current parking system, our parking system is free nights and weekends. So that parking structure would mimic that as well. And those parking spaces, those overflow parking spaces in the ramp uh, would be available to the public to use. So I bring that up because it's part of the development, but it actually goes and will help support the surrounding uses related to the park as well. And so some of the items we are talking about here today are really getting access to that parking structure as well as the development in the surrounding uh, park properties. Uh, so talk a little bit about this, the development itself. Uh, what you see on the screen is an image that shows on the right hand side a seven story hotel structure uh, that will accommodate about 216 rooms. Uh, in the center you can see a convention meeting room space uh, that will be about 60,000 square feet of space um, that will accommodate uh, a number of events there. And then on the left hand side of the screen, you can see a nine story office tower, uh, which will house about 175,000 square feet of office space or, or space. Um, and then on the main level there, we'll see a number of uh, restaurants and retail uses associated with that part of the development. The hotel and convention uh, space total about $75 million in development, and the office uh, project is about $55 million in development. On this image, you, again, on the left-hand side, you can see the seven-story hotel with the nine-story office uh, building in the back. On the right-hand side is what uh, we refer to as kind of the, the parking ramp wrap. So this is a building that actually surrounds the parking structure. Uh, so you don't really see a lot of the parking structure. What you see is the wrap building. And so the wrap building um, is made up of six levels. Uh, that will be uh, 90 apartment units and about 25 condo units. And then on the main level, there'll be likely around 30,000 square feet of retail space that will be accommodating, accommodated within that development. Uh, that total project cost is about 36 million for the ramp, or for the wrap, excuse me. Uh, the parking ramp is in the interior of that building. Uh, it's a $28 million project. It'll be eight levels of parking uh, that'll accommodate about 915 to 930 parking stalls. So quite a large structure there to really, again, accommodate all of the uses we just talked about within those development, uh, within the development, but also you know support for the surrounding uses with, uh, again, the Levitt, um, Falls Park West, and uh, the future phase of the River Greenway. Is the, so what we can't see, would that be like the, the grass of the um, Levitt grounds? Yeah, so where you would be viewing, this would be, sorry, from the, this would be from the west, uh, so basically standing on top of the Levitt lawn, looking towards the east. So uh, on the, really the left-hand side, kind of that road coming through there would be the 4th Street that's yep. coming through on the, on the north side of the Levitt lawn, yep. And then this is a view of an activated alley. So this would be actually standing really on the River Greenway, um, the future River Greenway or the Big Sioux River uh, looking west. Um, this is on the left-hand side. You can see the taller uh, office tower. And then on the right-hand side is really the hotel and the convention center. So really what this is showing is just kind of the activation that this is going to create along the Big Sioux River, uh, the future phase of the Greenway. Uh, you know, a, a project of this scale um, 
it is going to drive a lot of density in this area, so there's going to be a lot of foot traffic. And ultimately, uh, as this is coordinated with phase three of the River Greenway, you know, it, it's really looking at how we've used the Greenway in the past, you know, using our public investment in the Greenway to uh, really leverage our dollars to create more private investment along the river, and, and then really trying to create that seamless transition between the greenway improvements and the private development. So again, uh, the walkability uh, is, is very a very key aspect of not only uh, the future public improvements, but also the private development as well. Ultimately, the whole development is over $200 million of, of uh, private investment that will occur. Uh, the start dates of the development, uh, assuming everything gets approved between uh, the tax increment finance district and then as well as these easements as well, um, would be uh, later this fall, um, likely starting in September uh, on a lot of this, and then uh, completion of everything uh, by spring of 2024. So the items that you have on your agenda tonight, um, uh, or today, sorry, this afternoon, I feel like <laughs> it's tonight already, uh, are, are really, um, this map is one thing that starts to illustrate why there's a need for some of these easements. And so the area in, uh, outlined in purple is really the, the property boundaries of the property. Um, but what you see is the, the outline in red, which is really a 25 or 26 foot easement that really accommodates the fire and safety access that's needed to support the density of the site. So really needing to be able to have that um, fire access and safety access, emergency access around all of the buildings on the site. And as you can see, that crosses over into some of the park property as well as some of the other improvements associated with um, some parking stalls that we'll get a little bit more into. Um, the other thing that this does though, by creating this access around the development and through the development, it really promotes um, you know, future access to phase three of the River Greenway and future access to Kiowanis Park, which is, is really limited today because there's no development there. It's just one large, uh, former industrial site that sits there um, with not a lot of key access to, to those improvements that will eventually happen. So again, uh, that's an important point of, for your consideration here today. This map, what this shows outlined in blue is uh, the easements that are under consideration that the city would be granting towards to the developer and to the development. And then the area outlined in green would be what would be the land gift from the developer to the city for us to be able to construct a portion of phase three of the River Greenway. So north of Kiowanis Park, that area is private property. That property actually goes out into the river. Um, and so they would be gifting us the, that property in exchange for the easements we're discussing today. And when we look at the this total size, if you add up all the easements and uh, you total about one point one two uh, or 1.1 1 .1 acres, the land gift is about 1.12, so really about a, a similar exchange of land when we look at the size of it um, moving forward. This next uh, slide really just kind of shows you, and, and moving forward, we'll use this slide, uh, but this has the aerial background um, as it relates to the easements and the property boundaries. As you can see, all the lines in red on this are the, the future property lines, so each building will have its own property. And then again, on lot four on the very uh, top left there, that's the land that would be gifted to the city as part of a future gifting agreement. And then we'll go through each of the easements that are shown kind of in the blue uh, that are for your consideration here today. So kind of following today's agenda, if you look at 5C, uh, the first thing that's being considered here is, is park purpose, and it's related to the parking concepts uh, that are associated with uh, the easements here that are being um, uh, shown. So really this is the first two slides here are showing the areas where the parking would be um, built and ultimately is for your consideration today as a park purpose. Uh, so the first two uh, areas for parking would be on the eastern edge of the Levitt Shell property and then really the, the eastern edge of Falls Park West or the very northwest if uh, a corner of the Sioux Steel development or the Steel District development. Uh, what would be accommodating here is about 31 standard parking stalls in these two areas 
And then we do have what are shown as kind of four bus stalls that would be used for events that are, would be hosted in the convention area. So again, these parking stalls would be available to the public um, uh, uh, for their use if they were to attend any of the events, um, but uh, are associated with the development. So that's the first area uh, that'll have parking, and that is part of the 5C consideration on your agenda. The second area is actually a portion of Kiowanis Park. Um, so again, on the west edge of Kiowanis Park, it kind of comes to a point as it juts into the development there. Uh, there would be f just four standard parking stalls kind of along that area. Uh, there'll also be a road that'll be for your consideration on the next couple slides. Um, and so again, these parking stalls would be available to the public for their use uh, as general access as they were to um, be visiting Kiowanis Park or the Greenway improvements moving forward. So now the next item on your agenda is, is 5D, and this is related to proposed roads that would go through park property. Uh, so that's another um, item that you'll be voting on here today. Uh, so the first proposed road is right where we just were with the parking stalls. Again, the west side of Kiowanis Park. Uh, so again, there'll be a, a road that would go through there that it would be adjacent to those parking stalls. And again, we'll create access um, really to the uh, uh, western edge of the River Greenway improvements in Kiowanis Park moving forward. And again, this helps provide some of that safety access as well uh, for emergency fire and ambulance access lane uh, on the eastern edge of the private development. The second area where there'll be a road coming through park property is, is uh, in Falls Park West. It'd be on the north side of the Levitt Lawn. Uh, this is an extension of 4th Street, so 4th Street doesn't currently come through uh, the Falls Park West there, but this would be extending that through to provide access to uh, the development. Uh, and this access has been shown on the Falls Park, Master, Falls Park West Master Plan uh, in years past. and so. Again, this is, is, is actually coming to fruition as part of this project uh, because we really need to um, provide this access as well as the next one we'll talk about to create um, the atmosphere and the, the, the connectivity through the development uh, with the density that's being created. So again, this would be also a part of some of that um, emergency and ambulance or emergency access needed. And then the, the last road consideration for you on the agenda would be on the south side of the, uh, really this area, uh, coming from 6th Street along the eastern edge of the Levitt, uh, uh, Levitt property. Uh, so again, this would provide a road connection through there. There currently is a, a very small 20, I think maybe 10 foot <laughs> access easement or 20 foot access easement that comes through there. It's just a gravel road at this point that really was used as from the former Sioux Steel operations as kind of access in and out as kind of a secondary access from them. So this is really more formalizing that easement as well as providing a, a little bit more wider easement there so that um, you know we can accommodate both you know right in left out traffic um, and traffic entering the development as well. So uh, again, this goes to the again the safety aspect of it, but again providing additional improved access. Um, for the development, but also will provide improved access for, again, the future improvements of the Greenway, Kiowans Park, but also the Levitt, um, and then, again, providing access to the parking that's make, being made available through the development itself. So the last uh, item on your agenda is 5E, and there's a several easements that are associated with this. So again, this is really looking at pretty much all the areas we talked about, except for maybe there's one additional area here we'll talk a little bit about. But this would be uh, all of the easements that ultimately the city would be uh, granting to uh, CR Lloyd Associates or their assignees as we move forward with the development. Uh, so again, the location of the first easement is on the north and west side of the steel district development, um, so the eastern edge of Falls Park West. This would again provide that emergency access as well as um, accommodate parking stalls that'll be for your consideration. So this one does have really a, a park purpose um, statement that has to be made for this because of those parking stalls. Uh, the second easement here is what we refer to as easement B. This would again be extension of 4th Street through Falls Park West. This would provide some of that safety access, but also would be the primary access into the development. 
Uh, Lloyd would be constructing and maintaining this. All of the improvements that are being talked about will be constructed um, and maintained by the developer. And we do have um, language in each of these easements that dictates that they do need to keep the, those um, operable for ingress and egress, you know, for the public. Um, and if and if not, then uh, the city does have ramifications for that. Um, but again, this. Um, uh, both parties, both the city and the developer, see uh, potential for this road possibly to be closed at certain times, you know, maybe during certain events that will be hosted within the park or the development. And so uh, there is language in the easement that talks about how that would work moving forward. And then, uh, again, there's no park purpose associated with this, um, but there is a recommendation because it is a road going through a park. Easement C. Um, is on the uh, eastern edge of the Levitt property again. Uh, so again, this is, would be accommodate parking stalls. Um, and it does uh, help accommodate the 20 foot, uh, 26 foot wide emergency access. The access isn't actually on this property, but it pushes the parking stalls out um, as a result of, of accommodating that access. So again, these would be parking stalls uh, that will be con for consideration for your park purpose determination. And also along this area, um, there are some drainage kind of issues just kind of on the grade level change between the Sioux Steel development site as well uh, as the um, park property there. And so as part of this coming through, that will help improve those drainage items uh, moving forward. Easement D is uh, the access that would come from 6th Street. So this would be uh, really, uh, again, the road access that would be coming from 6th Street along the eastern edge of the Levitt property. Um, Again, no park purpose needed on this easement, but you will be making a determination on the road coming through the park. Easement F, this is related to Kiowanis Park. So this accommodates, accommodates not only a road, but also four parking stalls over there. Um, again, also has uh, provides uh, emergency access through there. Uh, again, Lloyd would be constructing all these improvements. And this is an area where you'll have to consider the park purpose for the parking stalls. And then the last one, this one's pretty hard to see, um, but it's right on the eastern uh, edge of the Levitt property. It's a small area that would accommodate a fire hydrant. So for the fire and emergency access, we needed to push the fire hydrant on the other side of the road. And so to do that, uh, we created an easement specifically just to house that fire hydrant. Again, there's no park purpose needed for this one. Um, and Lloyd would, again, maintain those, those uh, improvements. So again, with all of these easements, all of the improvements will be constructed and maintained by Lloyd um, and, and any assigns that they would have for the property or those easements. Uh, the easement property must uh, be maintained in a good and usable condition for ingress and egress you know, to allow that public access. Uh, if not, there's uh, ramifications that the city can take to, to notice that those, those improvements get done. Uh, all of the improvements that have been discussed will have to be reviewed by the Parks and Recreation Department, and those plans will have to be approved before any construction can be a begin on any of those improvements. And then the easements are all really conditioned on each other. So all of the easements are coming together as one. They all need to be approved. Um, they're also conditioned upon conveyance of the land gift. So uh, the land gift, click gift needs to occur for the easements to be granted. They also, um, once they have, once the easement is approved, they do have to complete all the improvements within a certain time frame. And then again, all of the conditions of the easements, so all of these additional conditions that are listed within the easements that you have in your packet um, are, are subject to the easement staying in place. So the last thing I'll talk about, and I don't believe we need a formal recommendation today from uh, this board, uh, is that the actual land gift. So this would be um, the land gift from Sierra Lloyd Associates to the city. Uh, this is about 1.12 acres. Uh, uh, Lloyd will be, Sierra Lloyd Associates will be purchasing the property and then transferring this segment to uh, the city. This would allow us to build phase three or a portion of phase three of the River Greenway improvements north of Kiowanis Park. 
and again, um, it, it's not uh, needing a recommendation, I don't believe, here today um, uh, because it's greenway improvements and it, uh, we, we haven't done that uh, with our other greenway improvements. But uh, we did want to bring it here and share it with you for your uh, uh, thoughts because it is tied to really this entire project as well as the easements that we're transferring to uh, uh, Lloyd, uh, C.R. Lloyd Associates. So again, the land gift, gift grants us ownership of that property moving forward. The easements, we maintain ownership of the property, but we are granting a perpetual easement over that uh, for the intended uses that I presented here today. So with that, um, I'm here and open for any questions. Uh, we also have Luke Jessen from Lloyd Companies that's here and is able to answer any questions that you would have on the actual project itself. Thank you, Dustin. No. Question for um, Dustin. I can't let him off easy. <laughs> yeah, completion, completion date. Haven't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, the uh, projected completion date would be uh, spring of 2024. Um, and that, uh, the way that the, the phasing would work is actually the parking ramp uh, and the wrap building is what would start first with the office building starting short, really shortly after that. And that could po would possibly be starting, that would be starting this fall uh, with a two year construction. So summer of 2023 would be the completion of those two buildings. Uh, the hotel convention center is going to start a little bit later. That may be late this winter or early next spring. So depending on uh, the start date, whether it's this winter or next spring, it will depend on the actual completion date. But that would be either winter of 2023 or spring of 2024. So that would be when the entire completion of the private development would occur. It looks like for roads going into it, we're going to extend 4th Street, and then you can have access from 6th Street. Right? Yes, so yep. Those are the two main roads into there. Yep, so 4th Street uh, would be one of the actually the first improvements that would be done um, once these, uh, if this goes through, uh, because that's really the main access to the developments that they'll be using. And so, again, that would be something that could start later this fall um, and, and be put in. And then, again, yes, the secondary access would be uh, connected to 6th Street that would run along the eastern edge of. Uh, the development or of Le the Levitt property. So. It seems like all the additional parking would be beneficial to the Levitt because we were, I was there opening night, Don was there, and it was packed, and that's, that's the first night. So, you know, you think about just that, the parking and the congestion, mm -hmm. and this could help that tremendously. Yeah, and we know that the, the de private development is going to generate its own activity, so there's sure. going to be people over yeah. there. Um, so again, the, the, the parking that's kind of in the park area for your consideration today, but also, again, the city is participating with the developer on the parking structure itself as well. And so that's going to provide an, a pretty ample supply of parking within that ramp that people would be able to utilize as well. Do we know, the, is it like six story ramp or that's just TBD? It's an eight story ramp eight with 900 plus parking stalls. Yeah, that's been a part of our, we've been actually, um, our conceptual designs for phase three of the River Greenway are actually on that property. Um, and ultimately, I believe we have that contract approved or the design approved for this year uh, to continue to move forward with the design of phase three of the River Greenway improvements. And so uh, we've, we've known about uh, the land gift for some time now as this whole project came forward and as we started to, to look at phase three being located here. And so we've been um, projecting and, and conceptualizing that the phase three uh, portions of phase three of the River Greenway north of Kiowanis Park connecting back into Falls Park uh, west there would all be on that 1.12 acres. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just the other thing I'd mentioned too is part of the River Greenway project we're also, um, the plan is to also replace the low head dam and so part mm -hmm. of that work will also be on that property as well but just know that a, a, a pretty significant piece of this overall project is to replace the low head dam uh, clear over to uh, 
the upper viewing platform on the east side of the of uh, the falls. So it's in it's over 100 years old or 100 plus years old, and it's deteriorated. And in order to keep water backed up through downtown, we need to be able to make sure that's in place. So it just seems to really tie in nicely that whole end of Phillips to the falls. You know, scope and work that started what 20. 25 years ago, mm-hmm. looks great. I mean, is, do you anticipate any pushback from from anywhere? Because it seems like a no-brainer. I mean, this is really a nice, nice way to tie this together. Do you envision anything? Uh, no, the actual, um, you know, one of the big pieces of this is the tax increment financing. Um, actually, this came through in 2020, early 2020, and City Council did approve the tax increment finance district for this already. So they've they've already shown support for that. We are going back through the process because we really just needed to restart that timeline. And so to do it, you basically have to do it all over again. But it is the exact same project that was presented in uh, uh spring of 2020 to the council and so they uh, supported it then and, and uh, last night we were at council for first reading and they uh, unanimously supported moving it on to the second reading uh, so in uh, July 6 city council meeting the final considerations for all of that will be taking place well, the one other thing I'd mentioned to you and, and Dustin alluded to it is the Jacobson Plaza uh, and all that acreage that goes all the way to the railroad tracks and What's contemplated with the Jacobson Plaza is the ice ribbon and the inclusive playground, but we anticipate additional development above and beyond those two improvements. And so one of the things we're also trying to avoid is this is prime green space in downtown Sioux Falls. And so we're trying to avoid paving the park to accommodate the parking. And so to be able to have 900 stalls of parking and a ramp available for the general public to use on nights and weekends is when we're typically gonna get the use. But uh, just to have the adjacent parking to Levitt, you know, the on-street stuff, that's going to be really helpful to us. We still may end up doing some parking as part of the Jacobson Plaza project because we are accommodating folks with disabilities. So there's a, probably a certain amount of accessible parking we're going to be providing. But this certainly helps, uh, you know, the, the entire development. So just be aware of that too. So the only thing I would add is the Parks Department, the planning department. Might have to pull that mic up. But yeah, the Parks Department, City Planning Department, they've all been great to work with. We've started some coordination meetings as far as um, our goal is that Forest Street punching through, that we'll be able to start that after the Levitt season this year, get it all cleaned up um, and buttoned up before the Levitt season next year. And there's still going to be a ton of construction activity going on for a few years there between our project and the Greenway improvements and Jacobs and Plaza. But um, the city's been great to work with. to get all of those pieces coordinated. So thank you guys for your consideration. Thank you. Other questions for Dustin? All right, so I think we have four, four motions that we're going to be entertaining here. Karen, are they all recommendations to the council? Uh, yes, they're all our recommendations. Patience. I'll read the read the motion uh, as as it's been provided for us to to make sure that we do it the right way, and then I would entertain a a motion to accept in a a second, and then we'll vote. Right? Then we'll do four separate motions. Okay. So the first one is a motion that the park board finds the parking concept would be open and available at all times to the public. It also finds such parking stalls as described in the parking concept would provide a convenient supply of parking, which would benefit not only access to the Levitt Shell, but also direct access to Kiwanis Park and Phase 3 of the Big Sioux River Greenway. So I would entertain a motion and a second on that one. I'd make that motion. Second. Second, whoever. All right. Let's do a roll call for approval, please. Stavanger? Yes. Back to go? Yes. Sunley? Yes. Bigaman? Yes. Weber? Yes. All right, thank you. 
will be very welcomed. Um, so happy to give that back to the person. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. Motion for adjourned. So I move. Motion. Brooke, there you go. go, Brooke. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Proof that I was here. <laughs> The second motion pertains to some specifics around parking stalls, so uh, let me read that for us. This is a motion that we were, we're recommending approval that the parking concept adding 35 parking stalls, of which 31 are for automobiles, 4 for bus, located at the Lemon Shell East, and 4 parking stalls located along the west side, the west edge of Kiwanis Park, constitute an appropriate park purpose pursuant to SDCL 9-38-35. I'd entertain a motion and a second on that item. I would move to accept. Second. Second, tell me. All right. Good. Thank you. Rita, we'll take a roll call, please. Stavanger? Yes. Not to go? Yes. Sunleaf? Yes. Bigelman? Yes. Weber? Yes. All right. Thank you. Item number three relates to the roadways. So in this, in this situation, we're seeking an approval of the construction of three roadways. One that will be located along the west edge of Kiwanis Park. The second will be along the Levitt East Edge. Last, Lloyd intends to extend 4th Street in Falls Park on parkland pursuant to SVCL 9-38-38. 36. I'd entertain a motion to approve and a second on that motion. Move to approve, Weber. I'll be second. <laughs> so that's Rick and Ann? Yeah. All right, roll call, please. Stavanger? Yes. Noctical? Yes. Sunley? Yes. Begelman? Yes. Weber? Yes. All right, thank you. The last item relates to the easements. And in this case, we're going to make it very easy. We're just recommending approval of the easement documents as were, that were presented today. Items, uh, easement A, B, C, D, F, and G. There's no E, I noticed. So I'd entertain a motion for uh, approval and a second on that. Move to approve. Thank you, Whoever second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Stavanger? Yes. Not to go? Yes. Sunley? Yes. Begelman? Yes. Weber? Yes. Great. Thank you. All right. Let's Brooke go ahead. Get Brooke in. Thanks, Luke. Thank you. Thanks, you. Thank you. She's, she's, she's coming in. Yep. Welcome back, Brooke. Thanks. Happy New Year. Came all this way for the director's meeting. Her director's notes. What? You came to the meeting for the director's report. Oh, Ricky, good. All right, Donna, thank you. You bet. Uh, just wanted to give you a little update on uh, pool status. Um, as you know, lifeguard uh, recruitment has been very difficult this year. Uh, we've got 99 of 122. Uh, what we call full-time lifeguard, somebody committing to an entire uh, position. Um, we also have a lot of those folks that are sharing a position, so job sharing a job, you know, to, to lifeguard and teach swimming lessons. Uh, it's, it's certainly been a challenge, but uh, Gene and, and the rec team and Jackie included have uh, been re working really hard to, to get people in those seats. Uh, but right now we have all of our pools open except the McKinnon waiting pool, and then we have Frank Olson partially open for swimming lessons and for swim team. Swim teams don't require lifeguards, so we're able to allow them to use the pool. Obviously, we we're chlorinated and circulated. It's good to have it being used for some purposes, but general recreational swim, we're not able to be open because we just don't quite have enough lifeguards yet. Uh, so we're, again, we got uh, more people in it that are going to be in a class this weekend, and um, and so we are just continuing to hire and. And recruit and, and train and, and get, get them ready to go. Uh, it'll be a little bit before we get to Frank Olson, unfortunately, in McKenna Park, just because we have you know that that number of lifeguards yet to be able to uh, get fully staffed to be able to open open that facility. 
good news is we got Keene Park open last Saturday. Uh, that that facility is back up and running, and we got that staffed. Um, but the good news also is that we have plenty of capacity at our pools. Midco continues to be very busy. But the unique thing about it is that once Midco was uh, built over the last three years, our tenants that are out in our pools has dropped 25 percent, creating additional capacity. Uh, daycares love the indoor; they don't have to lather up every kid with uh, sunscreen, and it's just a lot of benefits to the Midco and. You know, some of you board members have been around long enough. A lot of question about whether people would swim indoors or not. Well, I think we've asked and answered that question with the attendance that we've seen there. And the amount of tenants that we've seen at Midco is really makes up the difference for, that we've lost that are out in our pools. So, uh, but going, but so my point is, if you want to swim, there's there's a capacity at our existing pools. In the Frank Olson case and the McKenna case, it may not just be in your neighborhood. Um, so, but we are working to, to get those open as well. I'll send you a note, uh, a little more background on what other cities are also seeing and the challenges they're, they're having. Beaches, for example, in the Twin Cities areas, you know, I think one of them said two out of the eight were going to be open and lifeguarded. So, um, so there's a lot of other cities across the Midwest that are having the same challenges. So I just wanted to be aware of that. Um, today was one team week across the city. Uh, today we had a grill out for all of our full-time employees uh, down at the park shop which is well received and then we also um, provided them with a water bottle so they could stay hydrated in all this heat. Uh, so thanks to Jackie for setting that all up and our Calvin and his team helping to grill and, and serve all the food and so that, that was well received. Um, just golf courses, I've talked to Justin, he said they're going gangbusters, uh, they have a nice day, they're busy and uh, they're seeing a lot of membership growth. Uh, and so I expect some good financial reports if this weather continues. It might be getting a little too hot now uh, for some golfers, uh, but uh, the, they're, they're doing pretty good. Um, just, to, just note, uh, just generally, and we'll probably hear more about this going forward, is the, the CARES Act funding that the cities have received, uh, which we've received where the Jacobson Plaza dollars and the, um, you know, the Hayward Park project, if you remember, we used some of those dollars. There's still dollars remaining in that along with the, the American Rescue Plan um, that we're still vetting through. And so uh, there, are a lot, there are a lot of parks and rec projects that are kind of made requests for additional funding. The you know, skate park, tennis, butterfly house, some of those other uh, partners that we have out there. And so we may see more projects unfold. Uh, but there, obviously there are more requests than there are dollars. Uh, and so we'll have to vet through that as part of our budgeting process. But just know that there may be some other park projects that are being considered for those dollars. Um, the scooters ordinance, you probably saw, that did not uh, move forward. Uh, and so uh, just FYI, if you didn't catch that, that they did advance uh, for council approval. Chairlift is all the foundation has been poured and they're, uh, it's up and they're, they're off site now manufacturing uh, portions of the lift, I think, that they're going to bring back to, to Sioux Falls. But, that project's on track. Uh, other thing is, is that Cherry Creek Trail bids came in well. Um, uh, Soak up construction uh, got the lowest bid on that. Kind of conveniently located across the street from Family Park, so they're in a good spot to be able to do that. Um, starting, well, I plan to start the construction first end of June. Yeah, so we're working on that. We're also working on a, on a groundbreaking as well uh, with. Uh, uh, Development Foundation to try to get something set up like that. So we'll let you know about when that's being planned uh, And then I also just would like to uh, This is not Todd's last meeting, but next month will be Todd's last meeting. He's fulfilled his uh, term uh, on the Parks and Rec board and so we'll celebrate his time on the board with us uh, at our next board meeting and Todd hopefully you're able to join us in person. We'd love that if you're able to and uh, celebrate your time on the board with us. Uh, it would be 21st. 21st, I'm told. 21st. No, 21st. Oh, yeah, 21st. So. <laughs> Sounds good, Todd. We're going to throw a big party for you. Well, then I definitely will be there. <laughs> uh, that's what I have for a report today. Okay. And uh, I'd be glad to take any questions you guys might be getting they have for me. Have we fielded any questions from the neighborhoods where the pools aren't quite open yet, and, or is that 
You know what? We've had we've, we've had calls about what's open. We have not had calls complaining that the pools are not open yeah. in those neighborhoods. Okay. And so I think everybody's been very understanding and understand that it's not only an issue for lifeguards, which are probably some of the hardest seasonal employees to recruit yeah. because of the certification. And then once you're certified, we also have to train you at each individual pool for emergency procedures. Uh, but if you look at every fast food restaurant in town, they're not adver adver advertising their products, they're advertising for staffing. And we'll match whatever food service, you know, hourly wage you're being offered. I mean, there are a lot of businesses are really searching for employees. And yeah. so, um, so I'll, I'll give you some background on that and kind of some of the th trends we're seeing on, you know, why they're maybe not selecting a position. Because we've interviewed a lot of people, not everybody's accepted. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to work as much. They don't want to work more than 10 hours a week, don't want to work nights, don't want to work sure. weekends. And there's just a lot of barriers to them willing to be able to work for us. So, and no fault of their own, it's their own personal choice, but it, it is more challenging than it ever has been, so. Thank you, Don. Uh, I'm not aware of any items added after the agenda was created, and there's no reading of any communications to the board. Any open board discussion before we close? Um, I just wanted to, um, so um, at my workplace, um, there is a fellow teammate that's battling cancer, and so um, the teams decided to come together and uh, do a pay it forward program, um, and each of us got $100, and we could decide how we wanted to pay that forward, because Jesse uh, is that type of person, always you know, doing something for someone else. Um, he's young, he has two little kids, and so um, obviously a tough situation, but we wanted to do something positive out of that. Um, and so being on the parks board, of course, I thought of um, how neat would it be to um, pay for uh, summer swim passes for families that can't afford it, and so um, that would be my contribution. Um, and as hot as it's been, I think, hopefully. <laughs>